All right, uh, good morning. Can I have your attention at the agenda, please? Here is what we're going to do today. We're still working on this target that says I can explain how magnets and wires work together. To In Peter life. Hill's eighth grade science class, students are spending their second day with a complex scientific article. Yesterday, the students began the process of reading the article. Today, they're making deeper meaning of what they've read. Today I decided to start the class with a pre-assessment. Um, I think whenever you can work with data with kids in real time, it just boosts engagement and kids get interested. So what I did is I created a little 10 question quiz using an online app called Socrative. Hey, so this is really interesting. My side of the app tells me which questions you struggled with the most. Question number three, which was about the difference between volts and amps, only 38% of people got it right. Question number four, only 31% of people got it right. Question seven, only 50% of people got it right. So that tells me our kind of areas of weakness are that section from the text about current electricity. If you learn something and you test yourself on it, you, ha you know what you're going to focus on and what you need to learn more about and what you need to improve on. So knowing what you don't know helps with what, with what you're going to learn. I knew the ones that I got wrong, I had to look out for and I had to make sure that I knew them. And the ones that I got right, I knew that I had them down and I didn't really need to focus on them anymore, that I could focus on other things. So now we're going to work in teams to get everybody up to a high level of understanding on this text. And the way we're going to do that is through this activity called content categorization. Let me so I think if kids are going to make sense of complex texts, you need to ask them at the end of reading it to do some complex thinking. And I think one higher level piece of thinking that we encourage kids to do a lot in a classroom is to categorize information and prioritize information. Take a look up front at the center board. Here's what's going to happen. Each team is going to get assigned one category from that reading. Working in small groups, the students discuss an assigned category from the reading. Their task? Prioritize and record two important pieces of information from this category. What would you say? I said static electricity is when there's a multitude of electrons on a surface. Each group contributes their own prioritized ideas and rotates to a new table that covers a new category. When you get to your new station, read the information that's there and then compare it to what you have in your notes and prioritize what you think are the, like the next two most important pieces of information and add those to the list. If there's anything on that list then that you don't have in your notes, add it to your notes. Electrons are everywhere. There are two types of electric energy, static and current. When you move a magnet over a wire, electricity is generated. Let's look back in the article because I think I wrote all of that in my notes. Yeah. Is the north pole of a magnet attracted to the south pole? The south other magnet. The south pole or the north pole of the other magnet? The south pole. So why don't we just write a definition for electrons and say electrons are small particles that produce... That can generate electricity. When kids are working in small groups, discussing the text that they just read, uh, thinking about what they think is the most important information, things like that, it does a lot of things. First of all, it levels the playing field. Those kids that might have missed something in the text, they get a chance to, in a safe environment, in a small group, hear it from their peers and add it to their notes. Um, at the same time, it allows kids to do some higher level things like make connections between bits of information. Um, and start to see the connections between the categories in the text that they read. It helps to work with a group and use the text and to talk about the text because you, you get options from like, opinions from your peers. Some stuff that you don't know, they will, they will give you their side of what they think and you can maybe like combine what you think and what they think and it would make a better sense. With any piece of science reading, you don't just read it once and you're not done with it. You've got to constantly refer back to it um, so this activity gave kids an opportunity to read what other kids had thought was the most important information, then go back to their text, vet that, reread text, and then add to what their peers were thinking. By having to go back to the text, you realize that you don't actually know 
everything about that subject. Yeah, it's a still spark. Peter invited me to come into this class um, this day because he knew that we were going to be uh, doing a lot of work with the reading that they'd uh, done the day before. I love it when teachers come to me and say, hey, today's going to be a literacy day, come join us. Being in the room um, with them allowed me to correct some of the misconceptions because I could see over the course of the class who came in, who walked in the door with some misconceptions, right? And who walked out with those misconceptions corrected and who walked out still hanging on to some, some maybe some misinformation. All right, please uh, uh, open up your iPads. You're just going to take the same exact test again. When we took the test again, I, I did much better than when we started the class. I got, I got nine out of 10 questions right. And the first time I had five out of 10. All right, guys, take a look up at the board. This is crazy, this is so cool. So question three, we've gone from 38%, now 75% of the class got that question right. Literacy instruction is not a separate entity from science instruction. Those things are so woven together in what professional scientists do, that they need to be woven together in what we do in a science classroom. So the number of people that got everything correct, wow, seven people got on the board. Good job, guys. Excellent.